Welcome to video number two of our series where we're helping you to build courage from chaos and live your best life. I'm Vanessa Wodeski and I'm here with Tom Campbell. Hi Vanessa, glad to be here. Glad to have you Tom. So today we're looking at Tom's big toe and we're looking at how that, how your toe helps to explain all of life's big questions like who are we, why are we here and what is the meaning of life? Right. Mm -hmm. These are questions that humanity has asked for all of history throughout all of time. You know, science dove into it, philosophy, religion, they've all tried to answer this question. Right. What's the meaning of life? And it wasn't until we could bring philosophy, science, and religion all together in one overarching theory that explains all of them at the same time that we we're actually able to get the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and before that, it was always kind of all or nothing. It was always either religion or science. We never right. had it unified or brought together. And because here, in, especially in the West, we're a very fact-based culture, mm -hmm. we believe that science had all the facts, <clears throat> that they could distinguish truth from fiction, fact from fiction. I've heard you say that the scientists are like the high priests of Western civilization. Yeah, Western culture, I say. Western culture. Yes. And I say that, that uh, they are the high priests of Western culture, mostly the physicists, because the high priests have the traditional job of telling everybody else what to believe. Mm -hmm. That's what the high priests do. Right. And in our culture, that's the physicist. Mm -hmm. They say, this is, you know, this is real, this is not. Yeah. This is science, this is hooey, this is pseudoscience. Yeah. They're the ones that get to, you know, determine what people believe. And just, just kind of basic science, like when I think back to school and what was taught in school, it was mandatory. What I learned in school <clears throat> was like physics, biology, chemistry. What we all learned in school was that the only thing we studied was matter, physical mm -hmm. matter in this universe. Mm -hmm. And we learned that matter was the only thing that existed. Yeah, yeah. that's the basic belief that uh, is at the kind of the foundation of science, is that we live in a reality that is mass-based. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a it's a causal reality. Right. So it's a physical, material, causal reality. So everything has a material cause. So that's kind of the, the materialism. Everything has a material cause. Right. And the problem with that is, is that it's just not true. Hmm. But that's the belief where most science is. Yeah. And it says that there isn't anything important that isn't material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, right. Well, look at what's important to us. What's important? Love. Is that material? No. Justice. No. Is yeah. that material? No. Uh, caring? Empathy? Hmm. You see, all of those things that are kind of fundamental of that material. Consciousness is that material. Hmm. You see, well, that's called the hard problem. You know, mm -hmm. how, does, how does consciousness have a material cause? You know, the brain creates consciousness. Mm -hmm. Well, they call that the hard problem because they've been trying to come up with a good explanation of how it does that, right. and they've not even made a significant step in that direction because that's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. The way it works is that consciousness is fundamental. We discussed that a little in the last one, and, and that uh, everything else is then a derivative of consciousness, mm -hmm. which brings us to the idea that this reality is a subset of consciousness, a virtual reality based on information. Mm -hmm. That consciousness is an information system. Right. And that's, it's hard to get there because we are so ingrained in this belief system of we materialism. Are. Like we feel, we just, all we believe is that what we see, that's what's real and that's all mm -hmm. there is. There's nothing more to it. Like this has been taught to us since yeah. we arrived in this, in yes, this life. That's true. And because... Uh, consciousness is is completely immersed in this game. You know we call the physical universe. Um, the the player, which is consciousness, begins all of its experience from when it logs on to its character. So as far as consciousness yeah. is concerned, there is nothing else mm -hmm. other 
than the gameplay. Because all of his experience comes from logging onto a character. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not like playing uh, The Sims, where partway through you can put a game on pause, you know, go take a break and then come back. Right. This game is total immersion kind of game. So then people like us, I mean, we have a body, that's the avatar. We have a consciousness, that's the player. Mm-hmm. And the player believes that it is the avatar. Mm-hmm. It seems that's self-evident. Right. But... It isn't. So we are all we are all pieces of consciousness, and we are playing in this game called life together. Yeah. And we're learning, and we're growing, and we forgot that it's just a game, and we think that this is all there is, that this universe is all right. that there is. And so, because we are again indoctrinated into this belief system of materialism, mm-hmm. it causes us to feel very disconnected from one another. Yes. It does, because we believe that the only thing that is real is material. Mm -hmm. So things like happiness and caring and love and beauty, and there's all sorts of things that really make our life worth Mm -hmm. living. That's that's where the meaning comes from in our life. And all of those things are reduced to hallucinations. Mm -hmm. We just think those things are happening. Mm. Materialism is a different philosophy than, say, Capitalism, Mm -hmm. but capitalism um, and materialism kind of go together pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, materialism as this very basic understanding that all that exists is matter. There's nothing more than matter. That's that's the root cause that creates Mm -hmm. all the dysfunction in our world. It's it's the paradigm that we live in that we're stuck with, right? right? Because we don't see ourselves as connected. We see ourselves as you're separate from me. And therefore, I have to compete with you for resources. And Even in our relationships, where things like empathy and caring and love you know, would, would have a bigger part, mm-hmm. mostly our relationships are based on individuals getting their needs met. Right. You have a relationship with somebody because that somebody can meet your needs. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. they don't meet your needs, then you don't bother with a relationship with them. Right. So that's the reason for a relationship is to find somebody that can meet your needs. You see, mm-hmm. that's still a self-centered, I'm here, I'm trying to get my needs met. And if you meet my needs, then great, maybe we can have a relationship. And if I meet your needs too at the same time, then we'll get along just fine until our needs change. Mm-hmm. Then there'll be a problem. Mm-hmm. So that kind of an attitude is an attitude that, that turns relationship into a business agreement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as long as we meet each other's needs, then we're we're a couple. But as soon as we don't, then we really don't have anything to hold us together. Right. Because it's all self centered. Mm -hmm. When I stop getting fed what I want, then why should I hang around in this relationship? Exactly. It's very self centered. Whereas real love is about other. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? you Yeah. How can I help? Yeah. How can I be of service? It's all about me making you happy, Mm -hmm. not me getting happy because of you. Yeah. And that's that's the attitude. That's the problem that we have. That attitude right. destroys all relationships. Yeah. And in business, it does the same thing. So materialism has caused us to be very selfish, self-centered, greedy, and all in it for yeah. ourselves. Because it yes, because it doesn't put value on anything other than material process. Mm-hmm. You see. And that's, that's a huge problem because we all are indoctrinated into this belief system, yeah. which is why we've ended up with the humanity the way that it is now, right. where it's like, what, 5% of the world's population owns more than 50% right. of the wealth. Like, and they don't really care a whole lot about that other set, that 5%, you know, I mean, that 95%, yeah. unless they do care that that 95% keeps giving them their money mm-hmm. for products of some sort or another. In our culture, we need more and more and more and more because we want. And that want is often generated by our culture, Mm -hmm. by our advertising, Mm -hmm. by the people who want us to want their products. And they use psychological tricks and things to connect to us at at an unconscious level Mm -hmm. to make us want their products. Yeah. And we, we allow ourselves to be manipulated by because we have these insecurities and fears and this fundamental right. feeling of I'm not enough, um, I'm, I'm disconnected, I'm all alone, I'm isolated, and poor me, because we don't, we don't see the big picture. And so 
again, the, the root cause of all the dysfunction we see in our reality sure. comes down to materialism. Right. And this is something we just, it's, we can't get away from when we come into this reality, when we come into this life. And it's really hard to grow beyond it, mm -hmm. is the point. It's really hard for us to get beyond the place where our world is mainly about users trying to use whatever they can to get as much as they can, yeah. rather than people caring about other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we're in that mindset, then if you look at all this dysfunction we have out in the world, you know, with, with wars, with abusive businesses. And uh, relationships. Abusive, and you know, abusive uh, yeah, relationships, abusive, what, uh, businesses. Yeah, and you see, yeah, everything. there's abusive so much. Abusive governments, you know, right? abusive law enforcement, you know. Poverty, abuse. injustice, like there's so much dysfunction, right? Yeah. Abuse seems to be not something that's bad, but something that makes you clever if you know how to use other people to make yourself wealthy, mm. to get what you want. It's a strategy that we've yeah. employed, it's yeah. A, it's a strategy, and we just don't mind that we hurt people in the process. Yeah, in so, fact, oftentimes it's revered. It's like, yeah, good job. So <laughs> as long as we have an idea that everything's material, then all of the softer side, the caring, the love, the empathy, yeah. all those things are kind of, yeah, they're there. Yeah, everybody should love everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But in the real world, mm -hmm. that's not the way it plays. Right. You know? So yeah. we kind of give lip service to that softer, gentler yeah. stuff. But it, we don't take it seriously. It's because not a it's, priority. It's yeah. not what pays the rent. Exactly. It's not what buys the groceries. Right. You can go out and give everybody a kiss that you see, <laughs> but it's not going to help you pay the bills. Mm -hmm. You see, so we see all that nice stuff, but we we don't know how to make it fundamental to our existence. We didn't know how to make it <laughs> fundamental, but we do now because Tom, your model offers us a solution. Right? You have a solution, something that's different from materialism. Einstein said. No problem can be solved from the same level of thinking that created it. And Tom, your model offers us a completely different way of thinking. You offer mm -hmm. us a solution that's completely different than materialism. I do. Yeah. And it's, it's one that does not throw the, uh, you know, the science we have based on materialism. It doesn't throw that away. Mm -hmm. It just recognizes that that is a subset of something bigger. Mm. So what it does, and you know, it's called a toe, a theory of everything. When scientists talk about a toe, they mean an overall under, an overarching understanding from which you can derive both quantum mechanics and relativity mm. that unifies those two sciences, because those are the two big, you know, things in, in physics and science that they underpin all the rest of science. Right. Mine, I call it a big toe, because it not only does that, it does accomplish that, but it also lets you derive individual experience. Mm -hmm. So you can explain quantum mechanics, you can explain relativity, and you can explain personal experience. Okay, so your model offers <coughs> us a solution, something different than materialism. And rather than, in your model, you say, rather than this being a material-based reality, you understand this reality to be an information-based reality. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, this isn't actually new, because didn't Einstein say like nearly 100 years ago that reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one? He, he did say that. And many of the uh, early founders of quantum physics yeah. made such statements right. about uh, consciousness being more fundamental, and consciousness is at the core of our reality. Mm -hmm. That was a, almost a common theme among the you know, Bohr, Heisenberg, yeah. um, Schrodinger, mm -hmm. Planck. Yeah. These are all the big, the big guns you yeah. know, that uh, understood it. And, and Einstein said, yes, that consciousness had to be you know, at the root, at the foundation. Right, right. But he said he had no idea how to express that in an equation. Yeah. So it was intractable. Mm. And that's because they didn't understand the concept of virtual reality. Right. Had they understood that concept, they would have found 
the solution to that mm. mystery. And so, then weird, weird uh, physics wouldn't be weird. Yeah. Quantum mechanics would be a logical science, not a weird science. So for nearly, <clears throat> for nearly 100 years now, physicists knew that the materialist model was flawed, but they didn't have they didn't have a model. They didn't have the understanding to explain what was fundamental, exactly. what was real. Yeah, about a yeah, hundred years ago, it makes it the the nineteen twenties, mm -hmm. and in the nineteen twenties is when quantum mechanics uh, evolved, and they did know that uh, this reality was not materialistic. So back then, they they saw that okay, well, this is flawed because of what's happening. This yeah, phenomenon doesn't doesn't, doesn't doesn't work. It's not consistent. Right, but and they, they didn't have anything like you say to replace it with. Right. So yeah. yes, you had all these people saying, "Wow, we're on the verge of a great <laughs> new discovery <laughs> right. about the nature of reality." Yeah. But, but what is it though? <laughs> but yeah, but 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 you know, and there wasn't yeah. anything else to say after the but. Yeah. Other than like Einstein said, well, seems like consciousness in there someplace, but. You know, everybody got to the word but and then dot, 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 it's, couldn't say anything else. Yeah. Because at that time, in the 1920s, virtual reality was not yet a concept, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not even a dream. Yeah. It wasn't anywhere near actualizing as a reality in the 1920s. Yeah, they didn't Computers understand. Computers didn't exist. Right. Much less a computer computing a, a virtual reality. So those concepts weren't there. Right. And without that concept, they couldn't take the next step. They mm. couldn't explain it. They just knew it was there, and that's why they finally gave up and said, oh, it's just weird science. Yeah. Nobody will ever understand yeah. it. It's just so weird. It's spooky. We don't get it. All right. So, so yeah. that was the problem. They didn't know how to take the next step. Today, we live in the information age, mm -hmm. and we have the concepts that will help us to take that next leap mm -hmm. forward so we can make this paradigm shift. So I'm excited for next week where we're going to jump into your model and look at how it works um, as well as understand how we will all benefit from it individually and together collectively as a whole. So make sure to join us next week. Thank you, Tom. And thank you all.